But I wanted to ask you, and I'm fascinated uh, by your slide about the um, investment in Gale. Yeah, there it is. Gale it's a striking ad, right? right? Absolutely, I can I can I can go on for a long. It's through something called the Section Two Thrive Three Two Three Five program. The goal was the creation of uh, something akin to the FHA, but for low income people, especially African Americans, um, and it was directly tied to that program. So that the way this mortgage backed security was legitimated and brought back was the um, agreement by people both on the left and the right that capital should flow back into the cities in the form of mortgages. Not business investment, right? Although there are government programs to reprovide insurance for inner city investments. That never really pans out that well. One of the reasons why you have uh, so many franchises in poor neighborhoods these days is the high rate of success for a franchise relative to other kinds of businesses. So McDonald's has a 98% loan rate success. That's why people can get loans from McDonald's. You know, so this is, I mean, with few terrible outcomes for health, terrible outcomes for a local community development, all kinds of things. Um, but yeah, with this, it's the Section 235 program. Now, the problem is, and this is, why, this is why I think historians actually can be of use to policymakers, is that one of the things I write about in the second book is how all the cultural assumptions of white middle class policymakers who live in the suburbs fail when it comes to these kinds of loans. And an eerie prefiguring, I think, of the subprime crisis. Mm -hmm. That market price, there's no market pricing. Inspectors are corrupt. These white inspectors are, don't know the neighborhood. They're racist. They don't want, they give kickbacks to various kinds of people that, you know, basically, um, you know, basically run off people's mortgages. So the, the program itself was to create subsidized mortgages for poor people. Um, uh, from predominantly new housing. Um, there is existing housing as well, um, but where it really uh, goes crazy is with new housing. Um, and in, inner in inner cities, um, in suburbs, in ways to move people into new neighborhoods, but there's all kinds of corruption with the, the contractors who build. So you have these people who have, for a generation, only lived in rental. I was writing about this as a renter, so I, I was very sympathetic, a renter who just bought his first house. And I thought, God, this is impossible, right? I, I grew up in rental housing. I am now buying a house. Um, and I have no idea how to fix the wall, like none at all. Like no idea what gutters are. You know, so I wrote, initially I wrote a piece, and um, it was rejected by the uh, Business History Review because I was being too racist. Because uh, I was like, I'm not being racist. People who live in rental housing have no idea how to fix anything. It's like, this is what, you know, <laughs> this is a huge problem, right? You come in, you have this white FHA inspector who says, the house is fine. You trust the FHA inspector, just like first time renters buying a house trust um, their home inspector. Um, anyway, so that aside. But I think, I think that it's important to realize that there's sort of cultural underpinnings, cultural assumptions about markets, how markets work, how, what kind of knowledge people would have. Uh, about home repair, about what is fair kinds of home repair, um, and all these things all come together, and it fails within a couple years. It fails within a couple years. Um, and uh, Romney's dad, George Romney, was actually overseeing the implementation of it in the early 1970s. Um, but even after the program fails, this remains um, as a site of investment. Now, not for just the Section 235 program, which is shown to be um, workable in the sense that they can get money for it, um, but for middle class FHA loans in general, and then and then eventually for non FHA loans, um, uh, overseas.